At this point, I know you've all seen it. The lack of hard, effective training traded in for unique and flashy exercises. Ones that your favorite influencer loved to promote as a better way to train. I bet some of you have even been guilty of falling in this trap yourself. You hear that basic barbell or dumbbell movements are not optimal, and maybe you've tried training them in for cable press arounds and iliac pull downs. If not, maybe some other social media trend. But my question to you is, did this result in more muscle mass for you? But wait, before you answer, let's talk about four exercises that every influencer absolutely hates, or to use their own words, are not optimal for muscle growth. I'm gonna explain to you why that logic is completely flawed, but let's get to the list. The first exercise is the flat barbell bench press. The argument here is the influencer word of the year. And when it comes to the chest, that word is converging. In simple terms, that means instead of pressing the weight straight up and down, converging is when you're pressing, your arms come together across the body. The argument is that you get a better stretch and a better contraction when those arms come across the body. This is 100% true. But dismissing an exercise like the bench press for the simple fact that you might get a better range of motion on something like a cable press, that's the perfect example of majoring in the minors. Of course, range of motion is very important for muscle growth, but the key to building muscle is always long-term progression. If after five years of training, you're performing those same weights for the same reps, your physique is pretty much gonna look exactly the same. It doesn't matter how great your technique is. If you're not getting stronger over time, your training is just not sufficient for muscle growth. And understanding the need for progression over time, a good stable movement, and an exercise that you can perform consistently every time you're in the gym, one that you can perform accurately and measure your results consistently, the flat barbell bench press, it checks all of those boxes, along with the incline barbell bench press and generally any other compound pressing exercise for the pecs. Exercise number two, the barbell row. This one is my absolute favorite. The argument here is that if you're training the lats or the upper back, doing a barbell row is not optimal because the lower back has to support the weight. The argument is that the lower back might fail before the upper back. As a result, many will claim that the chest supported row is a better option. And this is one argument that I'm not necessarily gonna disagree with, but only in certain cases. If someone came to me with a massive back, they have impressive traps, a middle back, their lower back is dense and thick, but they want a specialization routine to bring up the lats specifically. The barbell row might not be the main priority here, but the problem with this argument is, you have guys who need bigger and wider backs, guys who just lack mass in general. And they hear this argument and they say, I'm not gonna do barbell rows because they're not optimal. And now they're focusing on their angled pull downs, their machine rows, they have lat bias days and upper back focused workouts. Yet they wonder why they're still 160 pounds soaking wet. Skipping over the barbell row because it's not optimal to target a specific part of the back, that's like skipping over a dollar to pick up a nickel. The barbell row might not target one specific area of the back, but what it does do extremely well is force the entire back to not only support a heavy weight in the bent over position, but incorporate the middle, upper, and lower back in one single exercise, while also being an extremely effective exercise for long-term progression. Again, take someone who just starts training, who can row 100 pounds for 10 reps. Get them up to 200 pounds for 10 reps. Keep that same standardized form. Then take a look at his back. He's gonna grow much more mass across his entire upper back as a result of this. And if you then need to target a specific area of the back to bring up a weak point, do it. That's what bodybuilding training is all about. But don't skip over the exercise that's gonna bring the most mass for one that's simply gonna bring up a weak point. Next exercise, barbell curls. Generally, with this exercise, I think most of the argument comes down to discomfort on the elbows or the wrists. And in fact, if you do have pain on this movement, or any movement in the gym for that matter, don't do it. There's no single must do exercise in the gym, but there are exercises that if you can perform safely and comfortably that are great for building muscle. And the barbell curl is absolutely one of them. When we're talking about isolation exercises, you still wanna focus on exercises that allow for long-term progression. And with the biceps themselves, you're really limited to mostly isolation exercises. Many of which in general are not necessarily the best for long-term weight progression over time. If you were trying to build your chest and you said, I'm only gonna perform flies. If you're trying to build your delts and said, I'm only gonna perform lateral raises, you're probably significantly limiting your long-term progress. Now with arms, you're absolutely gonna hit those biceps indirectly with your back training. But biceps specifically is gonna be a special case. Here, where isolation exercises are actually gonna be better than compound lifts to bring up that specific muscle group. And out of all the isolation exercises you can do for biceps, 
your basic barbell curls, your dumbbell curls, and your cable curls, those are generally gonna allow for the best long-term progression. They're very simple to do, and again, an exercise like barbell curls is one that you can easily track over time. And if you take someone who strict curls 50 pounds for reps, and work their way up to performing 100 pounds for the same strict reps for the same amount of reps, if they do this, watch as their biceps grow. Next exercise, pull-ups. I'm gonna chalk this one up as an exercise that just most people aren't good at. And unfortunately, that's where I think the bad rap comes from. I can't tell you how often I hear that this is not an optimal exercise. In fact, I'm honestly tired of even defending it, so I'm just gonna say, go look at anyone who can do a lot of pull-ups. Go look at any bodybuilder who's added significant strength to their pull-ups over time. Even look at pictures of my back when I first started training and compare it to my back after progressing on pull-ups. In all of those examples, you will see, in fact, that pull-ups are an extremely effective exercise for building muscle. Now, I will say this. Yes, 99% of guys who are promoting these fancy exercises, they're doing so because of the world of social media today. That requires you to stand out, have new material, new content, and let's face it, it's easy to say, hey, you've been doing this wrong the entire time. That's why you're not getting results. Let me show you this new, innovative way to get it done. It's typical marketing in the fitness industry that anyone who's been in the gym for a year or longer can spot a mile away. These guys who are trying to reinvent the wheel to sell you something that they know doesn't work, they won't last. After a few months or years doing this, they'll come out with another gimmick and they'll try to sell you that. I've been in this industry a long time and I know the cycle. Just watch these guys and you'll see it happen over and over again. Now, however, there are a very small percentage of guys, ones who are promoting these less than ideal exercises, ones that they claim are optimal or the best way to train. These guys actually do have good intentions. I'm not gonna sit here and call everyone out and say everyone has bad intentions. There are many guys who will say, opposed to a bench press, that may be an angled press or let's say a cable is superior. The argument might be that it targets a specific region of the pecs. They would say, opposed to a barbell curl or a dumbbell curl, let's say a cable curl might give you a better range of motion on the biceps. These guys might not even be wrong, especially when you're looking under a microscope. But just because the exercise has these benefits itself, doesn't mean that it's gonna result in the most hypertrophy, especially long-term. The problem with a lot of these exercises, even the ones that are excellent at targeting a specific region of the muscle, is that they're not ideal for long-term progression. They're not exercises that you're gonna be able to add weight or reps long-term. They're not exercises that are gonna take a 150 pound lifter and turn them into a 200 plus pound bodybuilder. You can easily take someone who walks in the gym the first time bench pressing 100 pounds, and after a few years of training, have them repping 300 to 315 pounds on the bench. You can take someone who could barely do a single pull-up when they first started lifting, and have them work up to performing an additional 50 pounds of weighted pull-ups for the same repetitions. That's the type of progression that builds true muscle mass. So even though you might feel the cable press hitting a specific part of the pec that you want to target, maybe it'll even get sore the next day. If that exercise doesn't have the stability to add more weight or perform more reps over time, you're not gonna grow. And if you look closely at a lot of these exercises, you'll see the inability to progress long-term with it. And if you look at the most basic exercise, you'll see lots of stability, lots of room for long-term progression. And that is ultimately why they work so well. So if you're ever questioning the effectiveness of a specific exercise for muscle growth, look at the exercise and ask, can I progress with this movement long-term? If the answer is no, move on. And if you want the exact training programs that I personally recommend to build more muscle using proven old school bodybuilding methods, all my old school mass game programs are down below. And as always, if you wanna see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.